You've gone from uh, Australia's worst spot manager to Australia's best spot manager. Uh, how long did that take you to get your, get, it, get your head around? I understand how to uh, work a waterway properly in a tournament situation. It's taken a few years. I mean, like I said, I had a really good chat to Mark Healy a couple of years ago and just asked him, I said, what, what's the go with how you can manage to get those quality bags consistently? And he said, man, you've really got to start spot managing. You know the harbour better than what anyone else does. You just can't throw all your eggs in one basket. Just go for that standard bag and go for the big one after. That's it. So when you when you look at this waterway, and obviously you like fishing the clear water with that reaction baiting technique, how many spots do you have here? Do you have 100 spots you have to manage? Do you have six spots you have to manage? It's what, How big is the choice? Well, I was very lucky this time because all the fish uh, were basically sea run brim. So a lot of, I, I fished a lot towards the headlands and um, I, I was just figuring out that most of the bigger fish were running in off the headlands in and out with the tide and they were sitting around all the boat holes yep. for protection and for food. There's a lot of bait fish out there, a lot of kingfish to be caught as well. Yep. So I figured there's a lot of bait out there, there must be some really cracking brim around them. And uh, I reckon there was four genuinely big fish spots, the rest were like baggers. Yep. Maybe about six spots all together. And does that mean you fish two of those big fish spots one day and two the next day? No, I fish three each, either day. So okay. I left three alone. Actually, yep. Anthony Thorpe and I, we fish uh, a lot together and we figured if we stick together, uh, basically like you and your brother would have yep. uh, years ago, um, if you stick together, you can work out where good concentrations of fish are and yep. be able to, uh, to nail them. And um, using both our heads, we know what we're doing, yep. especially with soft plastics. We, uh, we found a few fish hanging in those areas and um, we nailed them, man. So you get, just run through your technique. What's what's the rod, reel, line, leader, lure, and run us through how you use it. Yeah, look, uh, the rod class um, is it's it's a six foot ten uh, high modulus graphite, very fast action rod. So it's it's really punchy. And you can zip those casts in very accurately, like I said. Um, I use a um, a five pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. So I mean, they're, they're, there's some fairly decent, substantial sized fish out there that yep. will must will muscle you around that uh, anchor rope, which is the biggest problem for yep. us. Um, I use a two and a half thousand size reel, which is the Patriarch Fluga Patriarch reel, Fluga Patriarch rod and reel package, um, and I, I predominantly use braid everywhere I go. I don't use straight through. Yep. I just think it's silly string for me. I just I don't I don't I haven't got perfected the bite um, with that yet. Um, I just stick to very basic things and what I've cut my teeth on. Yep. What sort of uh, what sort of lure and jig head? Uh, uh, well, depending on the wind, uh, we start off with just nice and glassy, which I don't like fishing. Yeah. Not many people do. Start off with a 30 second or internally weighted, yeah. and then you'll um, you move up when the wind starts to, to pick up a little bit to about you know eight or ten knots. You pick you um, you use a, a 24th or a 16th, depending on the because the, the fish are at two different stages today. They're either right up underneath the hull. Or they were about 12 foot down, which was suspending off the bottom. Don't know why they were there. I'm figuring they were bait. Yep. Um, but they're all over the crabby as well. I mean, it's like I said, it, was, it is a crab fishery here. Yep. And um, you speak to any of the old guys that used to fish Sydney Harbour, and they specifically say crabs are the best bait for Sydney Harbour. Well, you only have to look in your live well, don't you? And you pick out a handful of crab legs at the end of every day. I think a couple of times I've been back and just sussing out your bag, man. I've seen down the bottom. <laughs> There's a couple of little nippers going. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, okay, I know what he's doing. Um, Taking you how long to win your first ABT event? Yeah. <laughs> oh, a long time. Um, ten years? Yeah, I think I've been with the ABT for ten years now. Yeah. And describe the feeling of winning your first event. It hasn't hit yet, but I tell you, I, went, I landed um, probably about forty legals today, and by about nine thirty, I had about three point seven kilo. And I said they're really going to be catching them today, yep. right? To be getting me, and uh, I ended up um, getting a few crackers towards the end. As soon as that storm came through, yeah. um, but I did get worried because there's a couple of big names in this comp, and um, you, you tend to start worrying about those guys, and you think, oh, that 31, maybe I should up. I, I wish I could upgrade to a 33, yeah. and that was the, the last fish I really had to upgrade. And you know, when you got a 31 centimeter fish, fork length, I'm talking, yeah. in your bag. You got a pretty cracking track you have. limit, and of course, in the back of our minds are those days when the Greg Lees and the Wayne Reeds bring in five and six kilo limits out of the cove, and all the cove's got to do is turn on for a few hours. And the storm and is trouble. what switches them on. Yeah, and uh, I've spoken to Wayne Reed a couple of times about that day when he caught those monster fish, and and he just keeps describing the day, and it was the last of the run out. He kept, and the boats just went gnarly. You know, they were swinging around crazy, and 
And I said, if that storm pulls through and people fishing up the Lanco, there could be another one of those big bags that come out. And you know, the, the place can can fish like that. You can get some cracking bags. Yep. Yeah. So in the end, you did it very comfortably around a 1.3 kilo margin. So that big brim that you caught, even if you hadn't got that in the bag, you would have still squeaked in there. So that's a that's a pretty convincing winning margin with 55 boats out there. Gun anglers, you've done really well, mate, and congratulations. Uh, so your time has come. You just need to go and win that grand final in the Hawkesbury now. We can plonk you on AFC. I'm actually happy you didn't fish it, mate, because I would have been <laughs> extremely worried because <laughs> the type of fishing you do, and I've, I've, I've used you as a mentor over the years as well, Scotty Tanner as well, you would have suited perfectly. Uh, out there. I don't need to know that, mate. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. Congratulations. Thank you. Done well. Cheers. Mate, you're here to the big time in Sydney Harbour. There's a uh, fantastic result, over 50 boats. You've yep. come second. Yep. Um, what we want to talk about now, though, is some of the specific techniques that you use. Of course, everyone wants to know that, you know, what are the baits, rods, yep. reels and lures. So can you run through your, your gear and how you used it this weekend? Yep. All right, basically, um, fishing structure, okay? So, as I've already mentioned, um, using really light jig heads anywhere from 140th to, as Ross said, 124th, depending on the wind. Um, this time of the year, the fish are up top feeding on the surface, okay? So you can get away with really light jig heads. I like fishing clear water, and the plastics that do all the damage are basically um, 100 mils squidgy bloodworm wrigglers, and also gulp crabbies in the camo color. The camo color is fantastic because it's a very natural representation of what you find up on the marinas and pontoons and, and, and all that kind of stuff. It's it's the exact same camo, camo colours, so yeah, it's just fantastic. Those lures work a, work a treat, um, and um, yeah, fishing really like four pound liters. Um, four pound liters, it's a 50-50. You know, you get them out. Sometimes you don't get them out. Um, if you drop any smaller than four pound, you really it's a really fine line. You don't land too many of them, but sometimes you can get the bite. But that's about it, to be honest with you. Uh, what sort of braid do you use? Um, six pound Sunline Super PA yep. and four pound FC Rock leader. Now, what about uh, the rod and reel combo? Um, Daiwa Interline, six foot six with a, a Sirtate uh, 1003. So that did the damage and it was insane. Fantastic. You obviously like the clear water, so you don't like fishing the Parramatta River. It's the bottom half of the harbour. And um, and through your day, how, how many fish do you catch? Do you only catch the five or do you catch a lot and do you do some upgrading? Well, to be honest with you, um, we catch heaps. Probably. The first day, 25 legals. Today, it was less. Probably, I got about 20 legals. Um, it's not an anyone that comes to Sydney Harbour shouldn't really struggle to catch a bag. There's just fish everywhere. It's the best fishery in Australia for structure fishing. Um, like you said, I don't like fishing, um, you know, right up the Parramatta River, the dirty water flats, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I like the clear water sight fishing. It's fun. It's insane. Everyone has a laugh. It's it's awesome. So yeah, I, I love I love going. Basically east of the bridge and just hanging around the bridge area um, is fantastic. The fish are big um, and it's not like flats fishing where at a high tide the fish will be on the flats feeding, you know, and low tide the fish won't be there. Structure the fish are always there because there's always water there, so you know what I mean? You can't go wrong. So a lot of people are catching on to it um, and it, it's good, you know, like it's good to see people fishing it because they're getting, some people are coming in with really good bags, so yeah, it's fantastic. So, hey, congratulations, well done. How old are you? Uh, 23. 23, I think you've got a big future in this sport and you look forward to maybe winning one of these things one day? I'm gonna, I'm gonna hopefully knock a couple of the boys off one day, but yeah, I'm, I, I love competition fishing. Thank, thank you for yourself and everyone for running these events. It's fantastic. Fantastic events, um, yeah, and I'll, I'll look forward to um, doing a few, a lot more events. So it'll be good. What happened to this guy? He's one of the best MCs going around. Dead set. He's come a long way. Four years ago, I remember seeing him at Malakuta. I think Dave Welbrick will probably nod his head here. You were horrible, bro. Thank you. <laughs> you were horrible. And we thought, this guy's not going to last six months. But look at him now. Yeah. He's kicking it. Yeah. Good on you, bro. Thank you well very done. much, Ross. Appreciate kind words.